Hey, how's it going, guys? So here we have our quarterfinals match of the Fire and Dice Invitational. Uh, for those of you that don't know, Fire and Dice has their own unsanctioned event uh, called the Invitational. Uh, they host top 32 players, and they give out $500 split into top 8 prizing. Uh, so here's our quarterfinal match. We have on our right um, Tony playing... Uh, Zorark Lycanroc and on our left we have um, Ricky sorry I, I froze for a second Ricky and he's playing Espeon Garb uh, both decks are very high competitor decks and it's it's a very very interesting match I was sitting uh, right next to them while I was watching this match and it was just intense uh, so we do see that um, Tony did start a Lele didn't do much with it played a puzzle and that was pretty much all he can do for his first couple of turns. He does have a Zoroark up and running now. Uh, but Ricky's already in the lead. He already has his Espeon up and running. It's already hitting for 30 damage and confusing uh, his opponent's uh, Pokemon. And he does have two Trubbishes on the bench. So at any moment he can uh, set up that Garbotoxin. Uh, Tony did play a Mallow, put two cards on top of his deck and did trade. To get those two cards, bench another Zorora, and pass the turn. Uh, Ricky just uh, ended up doing uh, Confusion, I believe is the first attack, and uh, does 30 damage and confuses uh, the, poke uh, the opponent's Pokemon. Uh, we do see a trade from Tony. We do see a second trade. It's, And we see a Cynthia from Tony's side. Um, these guys uh, have, they had to play five rounds of Swiss and then the top cut. So these guys had to go through a couple intense players uh, that come to Firing Dice to get to where they're at right now. Um, looks like Ricky is just uh, constantly just using that uh, first attack on Espeon. Doesn't really have to do too much legwork because uh, Tony is kind of stuck as well. We do see him play Acerola, picks up that Lele, brings up a Zorark. And he ends up passing. It looks like Tony is kind of stuck because he can't get uh he can't get energies. Uh, good thing for his Zorark, it does have resistance against this Psychic Espeon, so it does. It's only taking ten damage at the moment. Uh, we do see uh, Tony play uh, rock three rock roughs off of Bridget, so he's gonna start trying to uh, pull stuff up and get knockouts that way. Uh, we do see a trade. We're gonna see a second trade. We see a, a strong energy coming down on a rock rough. Uh, we do see Guzma. Uh, he does bring it up, gets a DC, and knocks out that rock rough. Uh, kind of not letting uh, Tony go off. Uh, Tony kind of against the wall right now. Uh, not looking good for him. Uh, we do see a trade. We do see a second trade. We do see a Lycan Rock come down. There is no Garbodor uh, out yet, so it still does have its ability. Uh, he is pulling up that Trubbish because he knows it's going to give him a hard time later. Uh, but still no DC for him, so he's kind of in a bad position. Uh, Ricky does get a Float Stone, so he does put a Float Stone on his Trubbish. Plays an Ultra Ball uh, after evolving a Garbo, a Garbo Tox, not a Garbo Tox, and Trash Lanch. Uh, Garbodor on the bench as well. Uh, we do see him go for a Lele and Sycamore. Uh, we see before he even plays a Sycamore, does play an energy on his Espeon. And he draws the seven cards off the Sycamore. Uh, we do see the retreat with that Flow Stone, brings up the Espeon and does uh, 10 damage and confuses the Zorark. Uh, we do see another energy come down on uh, the Lycan Rock. We see a Guzma from Tony. Uh, he's probably going to use the GX and get a knockout on this Espeon. Uh, so we do see another Lycanroc come out. Uh, he brings back up uh, the Espeon with the three energies. And he ends up using his GX uh, to knock that one out. Very good play on Tony's behalf. Uh, taking care of that uh, Espeon that does have that extra energy on it. Uh, it was a really, really smart play on him. Uh, so we see Ricky does get a DC on his uh, Espeon that's on the bench. 
and then play Cynthia. So he's going to draw six cards. Uh, maybe looking for a flowstone to get this Espeon out of the active. And maybe a choice band to just do some uh, intense damage on that uh, Lycanroc. And ends up just doing 60 damage with the first attack and a choice band. Uh, we do see another Zoroark come down on Tony's side. So now he has three Zoroarks ready to go. Uh, still no Garbo, no Garbo Toxin Garbodor on on Ricky's side. So Tony does have the use of all his abilities, which is really good. Uh, we do see a Guzma. Uh, we do see a DCE. And we're going to see a knockout right now. This Trubbish is going to go down. Yeah, it gets a knockout on the Trubbish. So Ricky draws. You see another Trubbish come down. He does play parallel. So this is going to reduce Tony's bench to three. Uh, he does get rid of that Lele and gets rid of one of the Zoroarks that has damage on it. Uh, we do see uh, Ricky play a Lele, grabs an N, and both of them are going to shuffle their hands and draw the amount of prizes they have. Uh, Tony's going to draw three, uh, which won't really affect them that much because he still has the ability to trade. So he'll be able to increase his hand size and get the the things that he wants back into his hand. And Ricky just continuing his slow but steady uh, assault on this uh, Zoark. So we do see two trades. Tony trying to figure out what is the best play for him to do. Uh, we see double puzzle. We see a Guzma, double Guzma. Uh, we see an energy come down on the Lycan Rock. So now he's trying to figure out what is the threat and what does he need, need to get rid of. Because he does have the Guzma in hand. He can't pull something out and knock it out. Uh, pulls out that trash Trashalange uh, and knocks it out. It does have a strong energy, so it is doing that 130, which is enough to knock it out. Uh, we see Espeon come up and gets a return hit on that Lycanroc because of all the energies that it has on it. Uh, we see Tony going through his discard pile, more than likely going to play a Super Rod or a Rescue Stretcher. So we do see a Rescue Stretcher come down from Tony's side. He does return two Rock Ruffs and a Lycan Rock. I think Tony's realizing that uh, his Lycan Rocks are going to be the way that he wins this match. Uh, we do see an energy attached to Lycan Rock. And we do see a trade, another Rock Ruff coming down. We see the Guzma brings out the Trubbish and knocks it out with Zoark's attack. Uh, doing 80 damage, which is more than enough to knock out that uh, Trubbish, which is really good because those Trubbish later on do become uh, kind of a stick in the mud. Uh, we see Ricky uh, playing a Cynthia, so he's going to shuffle and draw six. Uh, Ricky just does uh, Psychic. I think it's Psychic, which is its second attack and uh, does some damage on the Zoroark. Uh, we do see uh, Lycanroc come down, so he does pull up Lele. Puts a DC on the Lycanroc. Uh, plays Special Charge, gets two Strong Energies back into his deck. We do see a trade. Uh, Tony trying to figure out what is on the board. Gets rid of a DC with a Hammer. And does right right is beating for 80. And we do see a flow sun come down on Lele, so that Lele is gonna get out of harm's way. We see a super rod from Ricky, so he's gonna return a Trubbish and two psychic energies back into his deck. And we see the retreat brings up uh, the SP on GX. Uses his GX, 
uh, knocks out the Zoark and puts some damage on the Lycan Rock. Uh, so Tony does trade. We see an energy come down on the Lycan Rock on the bench. I think he played Malo. Uh, does 110 and then. Ricky just has to knock it out, and that's it, because he only has one prize left. Yeah. It's a very, very close game one. Um, unfortunately, Tony Tony had a bunch of turns where he just couldn't get the energy. So he was pretty much stuck for a good amount of turns, and he kept trading and trading and trading, and he just couldn't get the energy. So, yeah, so um, Ricky does end, end up taking game one. They're gonna go into game two. Uh, Ricky, Ricky playing it really, really safe, really, really smart. I think he. I, I wasn't. I'm not too sure because I wasn't on Ricky's side uh, while I was watching the match. So I don't know what he had in his hand. Um, but I think Ricky held on to like his DCEs and he waited for um, what's it called for the right moment to play them and get the appropriate knockouts, which is really good. Um, I think I think Ricky played it really smart, and that's what kind of won him game one. And also, it was very unfortunate for Tony because he just couldn't get the energies. So yeah, um, so they're gonna go into game two. Uh, they kind of needed to take like a little break in between matches, uh, so um, they are gonna get a time set extension, which is really good for them. Um, so Tony's gonna start us off. off. Uh, Tony opens up one active, two bench, and Ricky opens up one active, one bench. Uh, Tony does get a, a Rock Ruff and two Zoras going, and does open up a Cynthia. So he is going to shuffle and draw six cards. Cynthia is such a good card. It makes like a lot of decks very consistent. Uh, so we're going to see an Ultra Ball from Ricky's side. We're going for an Eevee, which is very interesting. Uh, usually you see people going for a Lele, uh, but he ends up going for the Eevee. He might have an energy in hand, so he can hit this um, this Espeon. Uh, no, he has a Sycamore, so he does draw seven cards, does get the energy on the Eevee, uh, brings up the Espeon, and we're going to see a Retreat because of Floatstone on a Trubbish and 30 damage and Confused. So Ricky already to a great start. Uh, already has an Espeon up and running. Uh, we are going to see a Zoroark come down and a Zoroark. Uh, on Tony's side, we do see an Ultra Ball, so he's searching for a Lele. And goes for a Malo. Uh, gets two cards, and he's going to put them on top of the deck. And then we're going to see a trade, and he's going to grab those two cards. Tony looking a little confused, uh, but he hadn't traded, so we should be good. Uh, I, I think I walked away when this happened, so I'm not a hundred percent sure what's going on. Uh, I guess. Uh, Ricky drew an extra card. Uh, I don't know, but Tony just took a prize penalty. Uh, we do see. Wait a minute. Oh, yeah. We do see an energy come down on Lycan Rock. And we see 110. We see an Ultra Ball from Ricky. So I'm guessing Ricky drew an extra card. Uh, I'm not 100% sure. If someone if someone can tell me, uh, probably Billy knows because Billy was there. And Billy, the, the hand that you guys saw in the video a little bit earlier, that was Billy's hand. So Billy, if you can let me know what happened here, uh, why, why Tony took a prize card in the comments, that'd be greatly appreciated. Um, so yeah, so we do see an end. They're broken a shuffle. 
um, and draw the amount of prices they have. We see a Trubbish come down. We do see, is that Choice Pen? Yeah, Choice Pen. And 60 damage confused. Tony retreats, uh, getting his Lycan Rock out of harm's way, promoting up a Zorora. Uh, puts an energy on Lycan Rock, drops down another Zorora, and passes. Oh no! Uh, this is not good for Tony. That means he's stuck. We do see uh, Ricky play Guzma, retreats with a, a Garbodor, because it has a Float Stone and does 30, 60 damage on the Lycan Rock. It's not looking good for Tony. This whole match has just been one uphill battle after another. Game one, he wasn't getting energies. Game two, he's just in a very, very awkward position. Now he had to use now he had to use two fighting energies to retreat his Lycan Rock to safety, um, giving Ricky the opportunity to get one prize off of uh, the Zorora. He ends up using his GX and does knock out that uh that like that Lycan rock. What's going on? They're going back in time. <laughs> uh what's going on? I should have been there. I should have been watching because I, I, I kind of want to tell you what's going on, but I, I don't know. I wasn't, I wasn't there. <laughs> so, oh, he didn't have a DCE to use his GX. Ah, that's what's going on. Um, and he declared his GX attack. I got it. I got it. I got it. So yeah. Um, so we do see an N come down from Ricky. Uh, Tony just pretty much drew and passed because he doesn't have the energy to do anything, and he doesn't have another Zoark active to kind of swing with. So yeah. Uh, but at least Tony's uh, gonna give one prize to to Ricky instead of two. Um, we do see a field floor it gets rid of that uh, flow stone from the garbotoxin so now he'll be able to use his abilities uh, we do see a trade we do see a second trade from tony uh, tony kind of picking up the pace now and we do see an ultra ball going for a third zoroa zorark um, and because he evolved it he gets out of confusion which is really good and then we see the third trade uh, we see another Zorar come down, and we see another trade. And we see a puzzle. And we see one last trade, and Cynthia. So now Tony just needs to get a DCE so he can, he can start hitting some numbers. Like, come on. And he ends up passing. Ah, oh, God. It's just, it hurts to watch. And I was there for most of it. And it's just, it's so painful to have a deck that goes through your decks so fast. That has one of the fastest engines in the format. And you just can't get a DC. Like, you can't get a break. Uh, so Ricky does play a Cynthia. He's going to draw six cards. Uh, I guess he's digging for a DC as well. So you can... Uh, attack and do more damage with his Espeon, but he ends up just doing a simple 40 thanks to that choice ban. Uh, we do see a Malo from um, from Tony. We see an Enhanced Hammer get rid of that DC from that EV on the bench. Uh, we see an, a Psychic Energy Attached to the EV, we see another Garber Toxin and we see a Cynthia come down. And 
we see Guzma retreats that uh, Zoroark that was uh, taking lots of damage, gets a knockout with another Zoroark. Uh, Ricky brings up Trash Lanch, which is ready to go as well. Ricky plays Super Rod, uh, puts three cards to the, uh, puts three cards back to his deck. I think he got a Trubbish and two Psychic Energies. Uh, we do see a Guzma brings up a non-damage uh, Zoark, which is very strange. He uh, uses his GX, does get a knockout on that Lycan Rock, and puts some damage on another Zoark. Uh, the Zoar comes up, knocks out the Espeon. So, uh, Ricky plays parallel, reduces uh, Tony's bench to three. We see a rescue stretcher, grabs an EB, uh, puts an energy on it, and evolves into an Espeon. Ricky looking at Tony's graveyard or discard pile, trying to see what he's been using. Actually, counting items, that's right, because Trash Lanch is about to do some damage. Uh, ends up doing like 120. And then we do see a uh, double puzzle from Tony. Going for a field blower, which is going to be really useful right now. Going to get rid of that uh, float stone on the Garbotoxin. So it gets rid of the parallel, gets rid of the. Floatstone. We do see him play a Lele and a Rockruff. See Special Charge gets uh, two strong energies back into the deck. Uh, does trade. Trade two. Trade three. Attaches energy to Rockruff. Right is beating for knockout. Uh, so we do see a Cynthia from Ricky. Uh, retreats, uh, knocks out the Zorak, gets two prizes. Uh, we see Tony play Guzma, then plays Lycanroc, attaches CC and gets a knockout on that uh, last Carbotoxin. So this puts both of them at 1-1. One, one. So now the match is tied. Uh, Tony kind of made a comeback in that second match, which, which was really good, very impressive on his part. Uh, Ricky just couldn't get some energy up and running. Uh, at one point, he was just stocking up basic energies on an EV, trying to get ready so he can start swinging. Uh, so they're going into game three. Ricky's going to start us off. Uh, we see Ricky draw, gets an SP on right away uh, with that energy evolution. Uh, we see a choice fan, Cynthia, so he's going to shuffle and draw six cards. Ricky already to a great start. Grabs a, if he grabs a DC, he's going to be in a really, really amazing position. Uh, we see an Ultra Ball. Gets rid of a field blower and an N. Goes for another EV. We see Tony get three Zoras off of a hard cast Bridget, which is really great. And ends up passing. Uh, we do see a Sycamore. So he does get rid of a trash lanch and a Garbotoxin. Uh, but it's okay because he runs Rescue Stretcher, so he can bring those back at any time. Uh, we do see a DC, and he's going to use a secondary attack and do 90 damage. We see a Field Blower and an Enhanced Hammer getting rid of that energy from the Espeon. 
and the choice pad from there. And he plays a Cynthia, so he's going to draw six new cards. So we see a rock roof, an energy on the rock roof, and passes. Uh, this is not looking good. Uh, we see Rescue Stretcher does get that Garbotoxin, puts a uh, tool on the Garbotoxin, so it is shutting off abilities. It's very unfortunate that Tony's not going to be able to trade, uh, but he still has Fuel Blower, so he'll be able to get those back. Or he'll be able to get one of those to get rid of this uh, tool from this Garbotoxin. Uh, so we do see Parallel. Uh, we see Energy on the... Um, Espeon, and we do see him use his GX, does knock out the Rock Ruff, and put some damage on the Lele. So we do see C DC on the Zora. Are we going to see an Ultra Ball? Probably for a Zorak. There it is. We see a puzzle, Lele, and then play Sycamore. And ends up scooping uh, because they were on time, so there was no way that Tony could have came back from it. He was trying to get another uh, puzzle to try to kind of play out of it, but still, uh, Tony wasn't in, a, in the best of positions, so yeah. Guys, that's going to wrap it up for this video. Uh, this was quarterfinals at the Fire and Dice Invitational. Guys, I hope you guys enjoyed it. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you haven't already. Make sure to share the video with anybody that's interested on how quarterfinals went. Uh, very interesting deck choices and very interesting matches. I hope you guys are enjoying these videos. Guys, thank you again, and I'll see you guys next time.